everybody, my name is Jens Larsen. Triad pairs are great for creating some interesting and modern sounding jazz lines. Essentially you can use it in any style of any type of jazz that you want, but it's mostly connected with more modern or modal jazz. In this video I'm first going to play a two chorus solo on a minor blues, and then I'm going to break down that solo and talk about how I'm coming up with the triad pairs, which scale they're from and how they fit on the chord. And then I'm also going to talk about some of the patterns and the ideas that I'm using when I'm making lines with them. The way I'm going to talk about the triad pairs, some of them are going to be in position and some of them are going to be across the neck and I'm going to break down several different ways that you can make jazz licks with them. If you want to learn more about jazz guitar, improve the way that you solo, check out some interesting arpeggios or chord voicings, then subscribe to my channel. If you want to make sure not to miss anything, then click the little bell notification icon next to the subscribe button. This video is a little bit different from my other recent videos in that it's a lot longer probably and also there's a lot more material in there. But I thought it would be useful to try and take sort of a, a good size of a solo to demonstrate how useful triad pairs are and how many great different types of lines you can make using them. And that's probably going to make the video a little bit longer, but uh, I think you might be interested in checking out all the different possibilities that I'm going to go over. First, I just quickly want to cover how the triad pairs actually work and how you find them. Because this is, of course, on a blues and C minor, so it makes sense to just take this on a, on a C melodic minor scale, because that's a scale that's really associated with the minor blues. So if we take a C melodic minor scale like this... Now, for all the triads that are in there, you can just actually play one for each note in the scale, so that means that we have these triads available. C minor, D minor, uh, E flat or augmented, F major, G major, A half diminished, B diminished, and then we're back on C minor. So we have all those triads, and when you're using triad pairs, then you're using two triads that don't have any common notes. And you can check this out, but actually what that ends up meaning in a scale like this is that the two triads have to be next to each other in the scale. So the possible triad pairs that we have available here are always going to be next to each other. And you'll notice that that's happening throughout the entire video. Every time I have a triad pair, they're from two notes next to each other. So the solo starts with a pickup that's just the note G. So that's this. And then from there, I immediately go into a triad pair of line. And that's using uh, the E flat augmented triad and the F major triad. And this is of course all over the C tonic chord here, C minor tonic chord, and that means that it's a C melodic minor sound, so again this scale. And here we have already like the E flat augmented and the F major that are next to each other. The way I'm creating the line is that I'm first playing the E flat augmented uh, triad, and then I'm going down one step in the scale, and here I'm hitting a note from the other triad, which is the third of the triad, the A. And from here I'm playing the first inversion, F major. Moving down one step in the scale to E flat. And here I can play again the E flat augmented. So then we have this line. And this is really bringing out the seventh, which is a really nice sound on, on the tonic minor chord here, really strong sound. And what we have here is, of course, that the E flat augmented triad is really just the upper part of a C minor major chord. And then the F major triad is just adding the 6, the root, and the 11th. So we have this combined. This is sort of giving us a C minor major with a 13 and an 11. From here, we move on to a short phrase that's not really related to any triad pairs because that's just an A and a D. And that's taking us up the neck to uh, this position. And here we go on to the next chord, which is a C7 altered, which you find in bar four. That's of course a C7 that's there to take us to the fourth degree, to the F minor. And uh, this C7 altered, I'm essentially using the same triad pair as I did 
with the first example. Look at C7 also, so that scale is the same as D flat melodic minor, which is a half step above C melodic minor. So the scale we have is this one. The triad pair I'm using is really just taking that same triad pair and moving it up a half step. So instead of the E flat augmented, I now have E augmented, and instead of the F, I now have a G flat. And the way I'm playing this is that I'm using grouping of the notes. So I'm playing first this pattern on the E augmented, and then playing a descending second inversion G flat major triad. And what really works well with, with these triad pairs is if you can make patterns that have, have sort of other amounts of notes than just the three. So it sounds a little bit less like you're just running through the inversions. And uh, in this case, I'm playing first a four note pattern and then a three note pattern. And that works really well to just disguise the fact that we're kind of coming up with this line in a sort of very systematical way. Uh, and you can of course take this through the scale, then you would have an exercise like this. F minor chord in bar 5. We're of course on the 4th degree and you could say that this is another tonic minor sound, uh, so F minor 6 or even F minor major, but in this case the sort of the major 7 that would be an E sounds a little bit strange on a C minor blues uh, because it's, it's the major third of, of C, so I tend to use Dorian a lot more for this and that means that we have this scale. And the triad pair that I'm using uh, in bar 6 is using first an F minor and then a G major triad and then just stepwise resolving that back into the C minor chord. So of course you can check out, again we have so F minor and, and G minor triads that are next to each other and you can take those through the scale like this. In the example, the way that I'm coming up with the line is again using the same idea that I'm running up the, in this case, a first inversion F minor triad, and then once I'm on the F, I'm going down to the next note that's in the G minor. So in this case, that's not the E flat, but the D. So I'm going down two, two steps here, and then playing the second inversion uh, G minor triad there. Going back into the C minor. And then we go back to C minor. So we're coming back with the on the E flat here. And then from there we get in the next bar another uh, triad pair run. And that's coming out of uh, two triads on the C minor. That's the C minor triad. And then in this case an inversion of the D minor triad. So we have those two triads together. And I tend to think of that more as a as a Dorian sound, even though you can actually also think about this as being part of the melodic minor sound because they also both found a melodic minor. Again, we have two triads which are next to each other in the scale. And essentially, if you want to create a triad pair, what you need to do is you just take out one note and then look what's left. And that's a really easy way to think about finding a triad pair for a chord because you can also just look at, well, what note don't I want to play on this chord? And then just take that out and see what you're left with and construct the triads. The way this line is constructed is something that's pretty much sort of tied in with playing guitar and using string sets, because what I'm doing is that I'm first playing on the middle string set a C minor triad, and then on the next two strings, so on the high string set, I'm playing a D minor, which in this case is going to be a D minor in the second inversion. And this way of creating lines works quite well actually for guitar, so you can check that out. Uh, let's try the same from this C, so first a C minor, then we get a D minor second inversion, and then we get a C minor second inversion. And we can of course do the same here if we start with first a D minor, then C minor, and then D minor. So that way we're sort of creating lines that are actually pretty easy to play and also work really well as just shooting out in one direction and taking us from something quite low to something quite high within a short amount of time, which is sort of a very dramatic and very effectful type of line. The reason that I can keep on publishing videos every week is that I have a community of people over on Patreon that are supporting the channel. I'm very grateful for their support 
And it's because of them that I can keep on making all these very specific jazz guitar music theory videos. If you want to help me keep making videos, then check out my Patreon page. And if you join us over on Patreon, I can also give you something in return for your support. Now we're in the final cadence of the first chorus, and the chords are A flat 7 to G7 altered. The A flat 7 is really just a tritone dominant for the G7, so that's a Lydian dominant. And the scale that we use on that would be melodic minor from the fifth of the chord. So the fifth of A flat is of course E flat. And that means that I'm using E flat melodic minor, which is the same as A flat Lydian dominant, and that's this scale. The triad pair that I'm using here is the combination of two minor triads. So it's first E flat minor, and then the F minor triad. And I'm playing a similar pattern to what I was doing on the altered dominant uh, in bar four. So first a four note pattern where I'm repeating the top note and then a descending triad for the F minor and this gives us a seven note pattern and if you repeat that uh, just through the scale in inversions then you get this so you have this pattern that's sort of moving on top of the meter if you play it in 4-4 it's always shifting and it doesn't sound as predictable as if I was just playing the inversions next to each other. And it could be useful to really think about doing this so that it, it doesn't sound sort of as a very obvious way, way of just playing through inversions, because that can pretty quickly become predictable and a little bit boring. In the solo I'm continuing with that pattern but I'm moving to the G7 altered and I'm not using it as a 7-0 grouping, so I'm just starting the next pattern on the G7 on the 1. And here I'm using a triad pair that's consisting of a B augmented, so, and then a second inversion D flat major triad. So this is coming out of G7 also, or A flat melodic minor. And then what I'm doing is just using the same idea, so the repeated top note on the B augmented, and then just down to the, down the second inversion let me try it resolving to the to the G and the C minor. In the last two bars of the first chorus, I'm coming out on the G, so the fifth of the C minor seven, and the sound that I'm using here is really a Dorian sound, so really like a C minor 13 sound. And you can see that by the next part of the solo, which is again a triad pair, but now I'm using a G, uh, sorry, an E flat major triad and an F major triad, which is sort of giving us the sort of the upper structure of a C minor 7 combined with the 13, the 11 and the root. So it's really a C minor 13 sound. And I'm playing them both as first inversion, so first the E flat, and then from there going into this G7 voicing, and then resolving that down to an F on the one of the next chorus. The triad pairs in this long four bar phrase in the beginning of the second chorus are really relying on another concept than using positions. So in the first chorus I was mostly playing the triad pairs in a scale position and here I'm much more relying on using them on, a, on one string set. That's a very practical way to work with them for guitar because that means that it's sort of predictable, it's easy for your right hand to play and in this case also because I'm moving around what is essentially the same type of triad pair of two major triads that also just means that I can shift around the same pattern. So that's what I'm doing here. So the first triad pair is of course E flat and F on uh, coming out of the, the Dorian sound in the first two bars and that would be these triads. Then it moves to C melodic minor and then it's not E flat and F, it's uh, F and G and then we have these triads. Of course, moving to C7 altered, which is then the same as D flat melodic minor, we then get G flat and A flat. And I find it easier to work with these triad pairs on string sets by not thinking too much about them as arpeggios. Even if I'm playing them as arpeggios, I just think about sort of the basic chord shape and then use that when I'm soloing also as a reference. On the F minor chord, 
we first get a phrase that's not really triad pair related. So first coming out on the C and then this short phrase. From there we get another triad pair, which is the same triad pair that I was using in the first chorus because it's F minor and G minor put together. And the way I'm using it is also using string sets, but instead of playing uh, the triads sort of as chords or with one note per string, I'm here playing them as two notes per string. So the first one is and then descending F minor triad and then in the second inversion and then a descending first inversion G minor triad and then this takes us to the C when we're going back to C minor in the second chorus. Coming back to the C minor chord we have a triad pair that's really great for just completely spelling out the sound of C melodic minor as a tonic chord sound and that's the combination of an E flat augmented triad and then a D minor triad. Because with the E flat augmented, we kind of have sort of the basic sound of the C minor major, which is like the third, fifth, and seventh. And then I'm combining that with a D minor. So that's the, the D is the nine, the F is the 11, and the A is the 13. And that way I have pretty much the entire sound except the root. The way I'm playing this is that I'm first playing the E flat augmented triad in first inversion, so from G. And of course, an augmented triad is symmetrical, so you could also look at this as being a G augmented, but just to understand it in the, in the context, it's a little bit easier to think about it as an E flat augmented in first inversion. Then going down one step to play the D minor triad, and then going down from the A, one step down to a G to play another E flat augmented triad. And then from there, I'm just going down the triad again to end on the G flat where we're moving on to the A flat seven. In this case, I'm playing the lick in a position. So. But you can actually chain them together like this and then think more about moving across the fretboard. So an example of that is to take the same two triads and then use the root position, so the E flat. And now combine that with a second inversion D minor and then E flat augmented. So, which is sort of a nice, easy, symmetrical way of playing that across the fretboard. A uh, similar one could be to start on the G and then play the first inversion augmented. And that way, create some patterns, experiment with different inversions and see if you can find something that you think works well in whatever context you're trying to use. On the A flat seven here in the final cadence of the second chorus, then we get another type of triad pair that I didn't talk about before because we've kind of been only using the augmented, the minor and the major triads. And here I'm using the diminished triads. I'm playing on the A flat seven. And of course, the upper structure of an A flat seven is a C diminished triad. That's also what I'm using here, so I'm coming out on the G flat. And then I'm combining that with a B flat major triad. And it's similar to the idea before that we kind of get the whole sound of the Lydian dominant, except for the root. So we have the entire upper structure of the chord with the third, fifth and seventh. And then I'm adding the, e, uh, the B flat major triad, and that's giving us nine, sharp 11 and 13. That way that's a really nice uh, color to add on top of the chord. And then it's similar to one of the other patterns I'm using with the repeating top note, except now I've changed the rhythm a little bit. And then from there, it's moving on to the G7 altered. So again, using just this sound. Uh, but here I'm using two minor triads. So I'm using an A flat minor and a B flat minor triad. And I'm coming out on the B and then just playing the ascending triad. Moving on to the F, which is sort of the middle note in the first inversion uh, B flat minor triad. So, so that's essentially this triad. And then I'm resolving that to the G and the C minor. To explore the sound of the C diminished and the B flat major triad, then you can play this exercise. playing the two minor triads over the G7 altered, so the 
A flat and the B flat minor. You could have an exercise like this. If you want to check out another video where I'm discussing how I improvise over chord progressions, then check out this video where I'm breaking down a solo that I played over the jazz standard out of nowhere, discussing everything that I used and how I came up with the melodies. If this is the first time you see one of my videos and you want to learn more about jazz guitar, then subscribe to my channel. If you want to help me keep making videos, then check out my Patreon page. That's about it for this time. Thank you for watching and until next time.